Ah, here we are again, everyone's favorite time of the week. It's another Retroid Pocket 3 Plus settings guide. This one for the PlayStation Portable. That's what I've been playing the most of in the last week or so, so it made the most sense to me to do this video while I've been working on the settings for myself anyway. Of course, all of these games will be playing with the PPSSPP emulator. And no, I don't care if you say it some other way. That's how I'm saying it. So let's take a look at what I recommend for your general settings for most games. Obviously, you want Vulkan, buffered rendering, and to simulate block transfer effects for most games. We don't want any frame skipping unless it's absolutely necessary. Here, for my post-processing shader, I do find that FXA anti-aliasing works well in most games and looks good. You want full screen, and let's set this at 3x because almost every PlayStation Portable game will now run fine at 3x resolution on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Then choose native for your display resolution because there's really no need to output a resolution higher than the screen itself. And you can take a look at these other settings. Down here, you could turn this on or off. I usually start with off, but you might get a slight performance gain by turning it on in some games. But this is what I usually start with when I'm testing a new game. It will usually work at 3x. Generally, I just do not like the way that texture scaling looks, so I usually don't turn it on at all. And as for texture filtering, I keep it at 16x and texture filtering linear, screen filtering nearest. Although I will show you the difference that that makes with a couple of example games at the beginning of the next section of the video. For this next setting, I've generally kept it off or safe. I don't notice a difference in how games look, but you definitely can get a speed improvement by going with aggressive on certain hard to run games. So you choose either start off or safe mode. It should be fine. In audio, I just leave everything at their default settings. Of course, in control, you can set up your button mapping and things like that, however you prefer. I don't really change anything there except the button mapping. I don't do anything with networking or tools, but there are a few things to look at in system. Obviously, you need a memory stick if you're going to be saving games, so just make sure that's set. Down here, I've not had a problem turning on fast memory, so I go ahead and turn it on. And I also turn on IO on thread because I've not seen it cause issues and I usually choose fast. But there are some games where you might notice hiccups and slowdowns and for those games you may need to change that to this second option. And that usually fixes those uh, frame rate dips. I'll show you an example of that later. Here you can see all of these settings are pretty much just at their defaults, not that important. I don't do any overclocking, I let it stay on auto. And now, it's time for some games. We're going to start with Mega Man Powered Up, just to show you how some of this texture filtering works. Now, first I will say that this game is not very demanding, and so you can easily run it at 4x. I also tried it at 5x and it was fine. However, if you look down here, and I don't know how well this will show on screen, so I'll zoom in on And it's a minor thing, but his mouth shimmers a bit at 4x. However, if we switch it back to 3x, the shimmering is actually quite a bit better. I'm not sure exactly why. I assume it has something to do with downsampling the rendered image to the resolution of the screen. However, I do think overall it looks better at 3x, so might as well run it there. And now let's walk over here and take a look at the image on these box textures. If I change the texture filtering to nearest instead of linear, and then we take a look at the rocks on the box, you can see there are quite a bit of jaggies around the edges. It's pretty obvious there. I think you'll be able to see that even with YouTube quality. However, if instead we choose linear texture filtering, I think those boxes actually look quite a bit better. The edges are smoothed out in a nice way, 
They're not too smooth, they just look better. But you know, you can have a look for yourself. Usually I prefer linear texture filtering. However, because this game is not very demanding and we could run it at 5x, we do actually have another option. We could go into the texture filtering and choose auto max quality. And for this game, that's fine. For some others, it wouldn't be, but you can take a look at the boxes now. For more demanding games, you might start getting frame rate dips by using max quality texture filtering. But in this one, as you can see, Mega Man Powered Up will run just fine that way. And another game where I can show you the difference that this texture filtering makes is Ridge Racer 2. Let me just go ahead and uh, park my car here, and then I will hop into the settings and change the texture filtering. If we switch it from linear to nearest and then jump back out, you'll see that those mountains are very pixelated now. And maybe for some games you would want that, but for this game and for most others, I feel that the linear texture filtering just looks better. If it was a cartoony sort of game, maybe you would like that, that look, but I think this looks more realistic as a mountain face than all of that pixelated mess. Now, can I catch up and win this race after having a a little settings guide action. Spoiler alert, seventh place was the best I could manage. Now let's pop into Crash Mind Over Mutant, mostly to show you how that texture scaling looks and why I don't usually like it. So let's go ahead and set it to nearest and you can see the mountains are again pixelated and maybe for a game like this, it's a cool look, actually. I might prefer it to the smoothed out mountains, which I don't like in a racing game. However, let's go ahead and then turn on texture scaling and see what that looks like. It's, it's a bit weird, I guess, uh, but maybe it does have a more cartoony look, which works in this game. And if you want that cartoony look smoothed out even more, you could change back to linear texture filtering. And now you have what I think is a pretty cool look if you want a cartoon or almost painterly sort of textured look. Uh, whether you would prefer it with linear or nearest in this case is up to you. Either way, the textures are going to be very smoothed out and cartoon style and this is a game where that might work. And now it's time for a bit of a showcase of some games that work great at 3x resolution with my standard PSP settings. The first one is Pac-Man World Rally because I just know there are some of you or at least one of you out there who just has to see every kart racer on every console ever especially if it's some sort of franchise character like Pac-Man or Garfield. And actually, at this moment, I, I think I'd rather be playing Garfield Kart Racing than this. So let's move on to Wipeout Pulse, which also looks absolutely fantastic at 3x. Silky smooth, no frame rate dips whatsoever in this game.
Really, the only performance to complain about here is mine. I feel like there are magnets in the walls, but it's just, it's just me. It's all my fault. Sega Rally Revo also doesn't need any changes. In fact, you can run it all the way up at 4X if you really want to. I didn't notice any drastic difference in the appearance of the game at 3X versus 4X, but I just want to show you what the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is capable of when it comes to playing PSP games. Daxter is another game that works great at 3x, although I did notice a few minor frame rate hiccups, and so I have altered my settings just a bit. And so let me take you through and show you those changes that I've made just to get slightly better performance. Of course, I've turned this on and set the curves to low. That tends to help if the game is rendering curves. And I've set this to aggressive. Other than that, no real changes have taken place. And that did seem to smooth out the game's performance. I didn't notice any minor frame rate hiccups after that. And now let's shift from Daxter by himself to Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier. And I do want to point out that for all these games, I recommend you create game config and then change the settings there. That way, anytime you're altering your settings, you're only altering it for that game. I'll show you here, I've got all of my default settings. This is the first time I'm testing this game. So I'll just speed us forward to the beginning of gameplay. You can take a look at how well this game runs. It's much better than it did on the Retroid Pocket 3. Although, I am already noticing a few small, minor frame rate hiccups. Especially, you'll see one right there. So I think we should just go ahead and fix that. By making those small changes that will help boost performance. Turning on that, setting the curves to low, and then just changing this from off to safe is enough to take care of any of those little frame rate dips and now the game is running with no issues at all. Finally, I know it's the only thing most of you care about. Let's take a look at God of War Ghost of Sparta. You do have to make a lot of changes, including turning off 
simulate block transfer effects. That's the first big change. And you're also going to want to set the resolution down to 2x. It's almost running full speed at 3x, but not quite. Down here, of course, you want to turn on these two speed up options and obviously set the curves to low. However, you can still safely leave your texture filtering on, but you do want to set this to aggressive. And over in the system tab, you do want to make sure you've got these boxes checked if you don't in other games and change this to host. But with those things out of the way, I think you'll be happy with the performance of this game. You may notice some minor, minor frame rate dips, but none of that chugging that you might have seen when you were opening chests or doing certain moves for the first time. Now, previously, some people might have suggested skipping buffered rendering for this game to get better performance. And yeah, it will run great, but that doesn't look good, right? We don't want God of War to look like that. No, we want all of those nice atmospheric effects that it was designed to have. So luckily, we can have that now on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. And I've got to say, for one of the hardest to emulate games on PSP, it's running great, and it's looking great at 2x resolution on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. And that'll do it for this Retroid Pocket 3 Plus PlayStation Portable Settings Guide. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you feel well-equipped to get the best possible performance from all of your favorite PSP games. You know the drill. This is the part where I say if you are enjoying these guides, please do like, subscribe, click the bell, so that you'll be the first one to know when I post the next one. And I promise you won't have to wait long. But until then, just keep gaming.